Hey, what's up, everybody? True Boxing here. Thank you for coming back to Get Hit With The Truth. So today we're doing the 2023 Top 10s as we are going to look, uh, start the 140-pound junior welterweight division. And this video is going to be on the dropouts, the guys that dropped out of the Top 10 from last year. Uh, and yeah, before we get into that, if you could smash the like button, leave a comment, or subscribe to the channel, I really do appreciate any and all support that I can get as I continue to build my channel here. So, uh, 140. You know, 140, uh, the, there's four fighters here on the list of uh, guys that were, that were in the top 10 from last year that dropped out. Um, three of them I think you're going to be okay with, and then one of them, I might get, I might get some shit talked to me, but that's okay. Like I said, I, you know, I go off of factual uh, stuff, so it's all right. But um, we go lowest to highest based on where they were ranked coming into the year. Um, and yeah, we talk about the kind of year that they had and why they dropped out. So we're going to start with, excuse me, we're going to start with former world champion Victor Postal. Postal. Postal ended the year tied for 10th. And again, guys, I am not doing any more tied for 10th. Uh, it's one number 10 going forward. I think that's that's fair and that's right. Um, and I really narrow it down based on why I believe that. So no more tied for top 10. Um, Victor Bostal, though, was tied for 10th coming into the year. And um, he went up against uh, Elvis Rodriguez, I believe, and got stopped in that fight and lost. You know, and I think finally at 39 years old, Victor Postal has kind of hit his uh, hit his ceiling. You know, he's I think he's uh, he's faded finally. You know, this is a guy that's been in some competitive ass fights against some good fighters like Josh Taylor, um, even Terrence Crawford. He was in the ring with went the distance. I think he I think he's the last guy to go 12 rounds with Terrence Crawford to go the full 12 to go make it to a decision um, and. Uh, you know, a couple years ago with Jose Ramirez for the world title, a very, very um, big fight right there. He came up just short. It was a really close fight back in 2020, I believe. Um, he suffered a uh, TKO loss to Gary Antoine Russell last year, but it should have been a decision. That was a premature stoppage, and um, he was going to lose on the scorecards, but he was going to make it the distance. But... Elvis Rodriguez went out there and beat him up and stopped him in this fight. And I think that's warrant enough since he was already uh, tied for 10th to drop him out of the drop him out of the top 10. So I honestly don't see Victor Postal getting back into it. The top the 140 is a lot deeper this year than it was even last year. And you know, him losing to a guy that's didn't even make my top 10 and Elvis Rodriguez shows you right there where where how deep the division is and just that he's just at that age now to where he's probably going to end up retiring then there's former wba champion and undefeated um alberto puello puello uh entered the year as a wba champion he was also tied for 10th but he would lose his title uh, due to a banned substance he uh, tested positive for a banned substance when he had a mandatory defense that was coming up and um, he was stripped of the title immediately he was supposed to fight Rolly Romero he was stripped of the title immediately and um, suspended he came back towards the end of the year and got a victory um, you know and and because of basically what other guys have done and he also doesn't have a world title he dropped out because of that but Puello is a good fighter, and he's with the PBC, so he'll probably get opportunities this year, you know, to get back into the mix of things. I'm not sure if he'll get a title shot, but I do think he'll get opportunities to move back into the top 10. We just got to see what those are. Then there's uh, Jose Cepeda, former three-time world title challenger. Uh, he previously was number nine. He entered the year, um, yeah, he entered the year number nine, but he was coming off that tough, TKO loss to Regis Progre last November where he fought for the w, the vacant WBC title and got stopped in the 11th round by Progre. So um, we already knew that this was going to be a tough year for him. I think he got a win early on in the year and then he decided to face off against Richardson Hitchens, an undefeated 
uh, American boxer on the rise. And Richardson Hitchens just out completely outboxed him and outclassed him. Um, at 34, Zapata, um, I think he's, you know, just the losses in consecutive years now, um, you know, and the fact that they were decisive losses. He was already at the back half of the top 10. I think age has finally caught up to him. And I think Zapata is um, basically, if he continues, he's going to continue to be kind of like a gatekeeper. If you can beat me convincingly, then you belong up towards the top of the division. But he's another guy like uh, Postal that lost to a guy that didn't even make my top 10 in Richardson Hitchens. And that shows you how deep the division is and just where Zapata's kind of at now. So, um, you know, and Regis Progray getting his ass beat against Devin Haney and not looking great against Daniel Lito Zaria earlier in the year didn't help Zapata's um, uh, cause either. So, for me, it really wasn't close. Zapata barely, you know, uh, not even close to the top 10 now. And um, I don't see him making a march back into it. But Zapata could ruin uh, a younger fighter's uh, dream by being looked at as a stepping stone and pulling off an upset. He is, to me, he's still got that live dog in him. And the final guy to drop out is former world title challenger. Is he a world title challenger? No, he actually never fought for a world title. The uh, Well, no longer undefeated, Ryan Garcia. Yes, I said Ryan Garcia is not in the top 10 at 140. He previously was number seven entering the year. Um, he fought the catchweight fight with Gervonta Tank Davis, the, suit, the big fight. Um, did over a million pay-per-view buys. So, you know, that was a big deal. But he had the two uh, weight clauses uh, put on him that hampered him in that fight. And um, one coming down to 136 to fight, uh, and where Tank only had to gain one pound, and then he and then he couldn't weigh more than 146 pounds the day of the fight, so he couldn't rehydrate as much as he wanted. Uh, Tank really put the handcuffs on him, and that I think that really affected him in the fight, and he got uh, knocked out in the seventh round by Davis, handed the first loss of his career. Um, he bounced back nicely in December, took on Oscar Duarte. Stopped him in uh, eight or nine rounds, uh, imploring a more boxing style, boxing slash punching style. Um, I thought he looked pretty good, uh, you know, doing it. A lot of people were critical of his performance, but I thought he looked pretty good. But I know a lot of people, there might be a lot of people that criticize Ryan Garcia not making the top 10. I'm sorry, he hasn't done anything outside of defeated Luke Campbell in terms of defeating a top tier fighter. Like, I, he does not have a top 10 guy on his resume outside of Luke Campbell that was legitimately in the top 10 or top 5. And that was back in, what, 2021 when he knocked out Luke Campbell? So almost three years now since he since he got that victory. Um, and again, he hasn't really had any big wins since then. So, you know, um, the inactivity has hurt him. And, um, you know, I like Ryan Garcia a lot. I think he's got a lot of potential, but he, in my opinion, is not in the top 10 at 140 right now. But he has a huge opportunity because he's likely getting um, a fight with Devin Haney next for the WBC title at 140 in a big super fight. Uh, I read a thing from Oscar De La Hoya today stating that he's already talked to Devin Haney's people and they're gonna get this fight done. So it looks likely that Devin Haney and Ryan Garcia are going to collide for the WBC title. Ryan will come in as the underdog, but a strong performance gets him in the top 10, even in defeat. A victory shoots him way up to the top of the top 10. And I, again, I like Ryan Garcia. I like his potential, but I cannot give a spot away based on potential. So Ryan Garcia drops out from last year as the 140 pound division got deeper and better in 2023. And that's it. So that's my 2023 uh, top 10s on the 140 pound junior welterweight division. And these are the fighters that dropped out of the top 10 from last year. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, smash the like button, leave a comment or subscribe to the channel. I appreciate any and all support that I get as I continue to build my channel. This is True Boxing and you've been hit with the truth.